Good evening. My name is Natasha Kuzmar. I'm the department head of the Health and Physical Education Department here at St. Thomas Aquinas. On behalf of our school, staff, and administration, I would like to welcome you to our virtual specialist high skills major information night. Thank you for joining us remotely. We are truly blessed to be able to share this opportunity and come together as a Catholic school community safely from the comforts of home, especially during these challenging times. This presentation will be recorded and shared on our school website. If you have any questions, please feel free to write it in the chat and one of our SHISM leads will respond. Now, I would like to invite you to, to join me in a prayer. In the name of the Father, and the Son, and the Holy Spirit, amen. Today's a new day, a chance for a new start. Yesterday is gone, and with it, regrets, mistakes, or failures. I may have experienced. It's a good day to be glad and give thanks. And I do, Lord, thank you for today, a new opportunity to love, give, and be all that you want me to be. In the name of the Father, and the Son, and the Holy Spirit, amen. The agenda for this evening will include the following speakers. Mr. Yantho will talk to us um, about schism and its overview. Ms. Pollock, Healthcare and Medical Technologies, Mr. Manzin, ICT, Mr. Gendron, Construction and Carpentry, Ms. Merrick, Sports, Mr. McConville, How to Apply, and Mr. Peruzin and Mr. Montoya will be joining us with some closing remarks. Before we get started, I would like to invite our special guest, Superintendent of Education, School Services, Mr. Anthony Cordero, to say a few words. Thank you, Natasha. Welcome everyone. Looking forward to getting to know the community uh, in these upcoming years uh, in my um, uh, position and, and role as superintendent of education. I have had the tremendous pleasure of getting to know the staff at St. Thomas Aquinas and the school administration over these past few months in my new role since uh, my position in October. And I can honestly and sincerely say that you are definitely in good hands. The sense of community, the pride, the energy, the commitment to um, learning uh, and all the pathways have clearly been demonstrated with great success at the school. And that's a tribute to the people and specifically the teachers and the school administration. So I thank you uh, for the invitation to be part of this this evening. It's gonna be a wonderful learning opportunity for everyone. And I hope you all seize the moment to participate, register for the four special high skills majors that St. Thomas, St. Thomas Aquinas has to offer for you and in your future endeavors. Take care. Thank you very much. Thank you, Mr. Cordero and Ms. Kuzmar for the introductions. Uh, my name is Justin Yantho. I'm the Department Head of Technological Education at St. Thomas Aquinas. I'm also a teacher of computer science and engineering and one of the specialist high schools major leads for ICT. The specialist high schools major programs are industry recognized programs around a sector. So they are recognized by the Ministry of Education and there's SHSM programs across a variety of sectors, uh, some offered at different schools. So for example, um, we focus on ones that we want to, when we look at our school population and what our students are interested in, as well as our local industries, what can support them in their long-term goals for post-secondary or their careers. But there's other specialist high schools majors, like it wouldn't be uncommon to see a mining SHSM program up north. So specialist high schools majors are, it's kind of a long word to say. So sometimes we say SHISM programs, sometimes we might say uh, SHSM programs. Uh, for a long time, we only had one SHSM program at the school and that was healthcare. And I think for a long time, students thought that it meant something with healthcare in general. The programs are taken over students grade 11 and 12 years. So the courses they take as part of a SHSM so program are based are on taking those taking courses those in 11 and 12, 11, but they're 11 and 12 credits. 11 and 12 credits. A SHISM program is not based on specialty courses. 
so students continue to take courses with non SHSM students and all the courses count towards their Ontario Secondary School Diploma. These programs are designed for students of all pathways. So whether a student is preparing to begin an apprenticeship or to attend a college or university program or go directly to the workplace, students are available or have the opportunity to join a specialist high skills major program. So there are course options that allow them to take part in the program and take part of the other components of the specialist high skills major programs that help enhance their learning and prepare them for their next steps in their education or their career. We currently offer right now and for the past several years two specialist high schools major programs, one in information and communications technology, as well as healthcare and medical technologies. The ICT program is now entering its third year and the healthcare and medical technologies program has been running for more than a decade. It's also one of the longest running specialist high schools major programs in the board, as well as one of the largest based on enrollment. And of course, we're very excited to be able to offer uh, two new SHSM programs next year. These two programs are in the application stage and we expect that they will be approved for er, later in the spring to start in September of next year. So these programs in construction and carpentry, as well as sports, will add to the existing programs to allow more opportunities for students to take part in an SHSM program uh, across different sectors uh, and in order to have more students be able to participate and take advantage of what the programs offer. A specialist high skills major program is based around four main components. These components vary somewhat in how they are implemented for each program. And I'll let each of the SHISM program, program leads will talk about the distinctions between each of these uh, components and how they vary for their specific program. They're designed to work together to support a student's exploration of an industry and their career. Each component will, like I said, will have its own requirements based on which SHSM program that they enroll in. The course bundle is one of the first things that a student needs to look at to see if they can enroll or apply for a specialist high skills major. Every course has its own bundle and some courses may be required for students to take, but most of the courses that a student that a student must take are based on a selection of courses that we that we offer at St. Thomas. So students may be asked to that they must take one course combined with choosing another three from a, a certain selection. All again, all of these courses count towards a secondary school diploma and they're attended in as a normal or traditional class with non SHSM students. Some of the core requirements are can be somewhat flexible, but again, it's designed to help students that are looking towards that industry. So they are still bundled of courses related to that sector. As an example, Students choose a major and minor SHSM credits. So these are the ones that specifically focus around the sector they are interested in. All SHSM students must complete two credits of co-op and it's a core component of the program allowing for experiential learning. As well, students must complete a math and an English credit as is normal for most of our students, uh, but it is required to complete a SHSM program which results in a red seal from the ministry on their diploma for the schism completion. The sector certification and training components from an SHSM program are one of the things that students often identify as being the schism program. Um, it's only one of the components, but it is one of the things that gets students pretty excited to enroll in a schism program. They come in a variety of ways and they vary from year to year based on uh, offerings as well as um, trying to match experiences with students that we have at the time. So students can choose those um, and we offer ones based around the sector they're interested in. And then uh, they may be offered by college or university professors or um, people in trades organizations or private businesses that are designing a uh, experience as well as recognized cer and certified um, certifications based around that industry. And again, they provide some unique experiences to a high school student's 
pathway through high school um, to kind of enhance that program as opposed to uh, an, an entirely new or separate uh, program. So often these certifications apply directly to their planned career or post-secondary goals. Often experiences are a little bit more general that apply to maybe not as much on specific tech skills. As an example, sometimes students think all of their certifications for ICT will be based around uh, learning technology skills, while some of these certifications are based on communication skills or leadership skills. They're also based around trying uh, new things that they might not have associated with that sector. And so that's one of the other benefits of a SHISM program in, for all students is being able to experience and see some of the things that they might not have really known about a, not only just the career that they are first interested in, but the sector as a whole. And they're designed to support the learning that occurs in the classroom. All our SHSM students earn these three certifications in CPR, First Aid, and WMIS. And again, the additional certifications that students earn are ones based around the sector. So for example, a construction SHSM student will also take additional uh, mandatory certifications in safety that an ICT or healthcare or sports student may not take. Experiential learning is again another core component of a student's experience in an SHSM program. Experiential learning can look different in a few different ways. It may involve job shadowing, guest speakers, tours and trips, and workshops. Again, based on the individual program. But the core of experiential learning for an SHSM student is co-op. Traditionally, a co-op that students would take would be a two credit co-op they take in their grade 11 or their grade 12 year. For example, taking it during periods four and five in grade 11. Students do have some flexibility working with their guidance counselor to plan their pathway and their courses for grade 11 and 12. And those um, options would be a one credit, uh, one credit night school co-op or a one credit in the summer co-op or two credits of a summer school co-op. And again, that's where meeting with the guidance counselor is so critical for helping students to plan out their, you know, their pathway through their grade 11 and 12 years while being in the SHSM program. And the additional ones like job shadow and guest speakers um, are there to provide some experience and interaction with industry professionals and people that can lend their insight into their own education or career pathways uh, to our students. The final main component of an SHSM program is the reach ahead opportunities towards post-secondary as well as apprenticeship in the workplace. Reach ahead experiences again can look different in a few different ways. They can involve special college and university tours. Uh, so we may look at instead of a generic uh, tour of a college program, we're specifically looking with uh, our students uh, with uh, maybe a different and custom tours that we work with our colleges or universities in order to give a slightly different experience for students and allow students to see maybe some of the different programs that are available at the colleges and universities. So um, I found this incredible for myself because you know things have obviously changed since I was in university uh, as well as what's going on at, at, at colleges and it's good for students and I see them not realizing the specifics and sometimes they just see obviously course materials online or brochures about what colleges and universities offer, but seeing it in person is, is an additional uh, component for students to take advantage of. They may involve workshops offered by the college or university professors or interacting with some of their students um, for their perspective of the program. It also might involve, uh, depending on the student's career goals, investigating apprenticeships and the pathway to apprenticeship uh, for students. So these students, as I said, are able to take part in maybe more focused uh, interactions with uh, college or university staff to get insight into programs a little bit deeper as they make those decisions for their next steps in their education. So I'm now going to uh, 
turn it over to our specialist high schools major lead teacher for healthcare, uh, Ms. Polak. Uh, Ms. Polak is new to STA. Uh, she is also a registered nurse and teaches our healthcare uh, courses as well. Hi, um, just so you know, my Wi Fi is a little bit slow. OK, so if there's a delay, just let me know in the chat. OK, so the healthcare um, and medical terminal um, technology course is uh, leading into an introductory. So I've got 15 years in the operating room. At healthcare. Um, will include nursing like health, personal support worker, x-ray technology. There's many, many more. And so I will help the students to learn all about the different careers that are offered within the healthcare system. Well, I've always had an interest in sciences, but I wasn't sure exactly what I wanted to do. Then I saw that healthcare was an option for me to kind of figure out what I wanted for a career path. So I did healthcare first year, and I didn't even know about schism to begin with. But once I had like gotten into the course, then Miss Field kind of like brought the idea of joining schism up to me. Just the things that we were learning were so interesting, and they were easy to be applied. And I think that's a really big thing for a lot of kids who you know, struggle with sciences and things like that, but you come into this class and it does really help with allowing you to realize what exactly it is that you want to do. The biggest thing was probably like the actual practical skills. So we do learn how to take blood, we learn how to do sutures, we learn how um, to take um, temper like temperature and tiny things like that. Um, but above everything else, I think communication is probably the biggest thing. I just like how hands-on it is. It's a lot of knowledge and there are a lot of things you're learning and there's a lot of terminology and technical things, but it's not completely abstract. It, we have case studies where it'll give us real life situations and helps us to know how to apply the knowledge that we gain. And also little things like when we were learning to draw blood, we had the synthetic arms with like blood veins running through it. And it was just really cool to be able to try out these skills that we're learning. Um, I've learned a lot of great skills. I've learned a lot of great communication skills, especially. Um, it preps you for what you're gonna see in the future. So I'm more prepared, and the Schism students are more prepared um, for what they're gonna see in the future compared to other students that don't have the Schism. Co-op's amazing. Um, it's a lot of hours. Again, I did mine in the summertime, so it was just really hectic. But it was really, it was really good because I made a lot of really good connections, and I think that's the biggest importance about it. You might hate having to go in for six or seven, maybe even eight or nine hours each day, but at the end of the day, you are going home and you do feel pretty fulfilled because you made those amazing connections with people. And above all, you've just been, you've, you've been, you can feel yourself growing as a person, and that's a really big thing. So the Schism program experience, what the great thing about it is it looks really good on your resume because you're taking so many certifications um, and you get, gain a lot of great experience. So I'm looking to carry that into my um, post-secondary education and kinesiology, just the skills and everything that I've learned. I feel like Schism is a great opportunity and anyone who has the op chance to be a part of the program, I think they should fully take advantage of it because not only do you learn all these things that most other people have to wait until higher levels to learn, but you also meet a lot of people with similar interests. You get to talk over ideas. There's so many discussions that we've had away on trips 
as well as in our healthcare class that have really helped me to further my understanding as well as um, expand my knowledge of different things that I'm interested in which pertain to healthcare. Um, I definitely would say do it. Um, it's a great experience. Even if you're thinking about it and not sure, I would say give it a try because you benefit so much. The co-op experience as well because you need to take a co-op, which is um, was amazing. I did it at a physiotherapy clinic um, and I learned so much. I wouldn't have learned any of that stuff if I didn't do it. So go for it. Even if you're like slightly interested in it, I totally suggest to just apply for it. Um, because once you get into it, it's a whole different experience. You might think like, oh, I don't really want to go I don't even want to try out this class. I don't want to try out the actual program itself. Um, but you do learn a lot about yourself. And even if you don't end up going down the healthcare stream, again, there is a lot of amazing communication skills that you will be learning from this course. Uh, the, so the healthcare program uh, is a program focused on um, that students work on in their grade 11 year primarily. There is some flexibility, but mostly, usually students take the healthcare courses in grade 11 and 12. Uh, sorry, in grade 11, their year, but they take them back to back semesters. So both the grade 11 healthcare course and the grade 12 healthcare course. However, students can certainly spread them over the grade 11 and 12 year. So the major credits for the healthcare program are the grade 11 in grade 11 they are the grade 11 healthcare and the religion course and in grade 12 credits they are to select the grade 12 healthcare credit as well as one of human growth and development families in canada female fun fit or weight training and there again there are some additional flexibility for students that maybe just can't quite make that fit their minor schism credit is the grade 11 biology their one math and english and again like all shsm programs their two credit co-op Some of the certifications and experiences, there's a range. So students certainly, some of these are certifications. Some of these are, are trips and investigations uh, across a variety of um, sectors or parts of the healthcare sector. And it also involves running things in our own uh, STA building. So in the past, the healthcare SHSM students have run things like what's your type, uh, as well as tying in with blood drives. So we've had a number of blood drives that have run uh, at St. Thomas Aquinas, again, organized by our SHSM uh, healthcare students. Uh, students also participate in Ontario skills competitions uh, in healthcare and demonstrating things like first aid. I get some of the extra things that uh, kind of we add on or the value add for SHSM programs are, like I said, the fact that Ms. Polak is a registered nurse and has insight into years of working uh, in a hospital. Um, we all, she also brings in, again, with her colleagues, uh, guest speakers. Uh, students do work on um, dissections, uh, IV and injections using um, simulators. And so they're um, essentially the, the same ones that colleges would use for instruction as well. Uh, we also have this Alex patient simulator uh, which essentially students learn to take vitals. Um, he, he talks, so they actually go through the whole um, patient care with the, the simulator, enabling Alex to ask questions and respond to their questions. Um, as, and it's the same, again, the same system they use in the college and universities for not only learning how to take things like vitals, but also to interact with patients. Uh, I'm going to continue that. To... Thank you very much. Okay. <laughs> okay. I am back. Sorry. That's okay. Uh, I'm going to continue to talk about to the details about the ICT specialist high schools major. So it's a very broad program, just like the ICT sector itself. And typically we are um, inviting students that are looking at careers in media and design, computer science, or computer engineering. So while students don't have to have totally their exact match um, set, those are kind of the three general areas that students are typically looking at when they consider an ICT Schism program. So again, ICT careers are varied, so we certainly have students that are more interested in things like media arts and graphic design. We have students interested in design, in technological design or 3D modeling or architecture, 
and students in that are more interested in things like robotics or computer science, software development, app development, et cetera. So again, students in terms of their courses, students that are looking at media and design careers have the options of taking courses in communications technology, photography, design technology, our yearbook courses as well. And the focus obviously for computer science and computer engineering are typically those core uh, classes that they would take both the 11 and 12 versions of computer science or computer engineering. So again, there is some range with what these students and we typically work with the interested students to hopefully build a bundle that will support their goals because there's a big range from a student maybe interested in looking at um, app development or art um, and design for video games um, at a program at Sheridan or at Niagara College and students that are interested in software design at the university level. So we work those students to choose their core major credits uh, from that from that list as well. And as well, their minor credits typically focus around supporting their overall goals. So a student often that's interested in more graphic design would typically take a business credit as their minor um, or perhaps an art credit, whereas a computer science or engineering student would fulfill their minor credit with something like grade 12 physics or or chemistry. And obviously, again, they're taking math and English and they must earn two credits of co-op. Some of the certifications and trips and experiences that we offer, uh, again, they are arranged. So some opportunities we so only certain students do. So students that uh, attended an animation workshop with a professional animator, those students that were interested in animation and graphic design attended that one versus some other of these workshops where all students would attend. And as our program grows uh, and we certainly meet and interact and build upon and create partnerships uh, with community members, we're able to offer more and more variety in terms of our uh, certifications or our trips and experiences. So I am going to turn it over to uh, Mr. Gendron now, who is our construction teacher and is the lead teacher for the construction SHSM uh, program. Am I good to go? Yeah, your your um Oops. your camera's off. But... There we go. No wonder I can't see myself. I have to turn the camera on. Um, hi everyone. Uh, my name is Rob Gendron. I'm uh, I, as Mr. Yantho just mentioned. I'm the construction um teacher in uh, at St. Thomas Aquinas. Uh, I came to this board uh, at the beginning of last year uh, and our main focus after I got here was to promote and build the program. Um, my background uh, experience and background in the construction field uh, is multifaceted where I started off um, in high school doing both woodworking and construction and built businesses in both before uh, before I got to the college level. Um, I left uh, high school and pursued architecture. And when I graduated from that, I went directly into structural engineering. And I've been all over the world uh, doing commercial uh, construction in greenhouses, as well as ho building homes and doing custom woodworking uh, here in Canada. So I have a lot of experience in all the areas that, uh, that are available to our construction students. Um, and uh, I, I'd, I'd be a good support for them. Um, careers in construction that, uh, if you look at the chart here, you can see if your apprenticeship pathway, college pathway work or university pathway, um, the options are, uh, there's a lot of options. Uh, our, our industry is probably one of the biggest employers in North America, construction, it's, it's vast. It's always evolving. It's it's many trades are included. Um, I believe uh, we don't have enough people taking tech courses right now in Ontario to fill all of the open trades that'll be available within the next ten years. So there's a huge demand uh, and and a huge opportunity for students alike. As uh, Mr. Yantha was explaining with the prior uh, Schism courses, um, there is a, a specific course bundle that you can pick from. Um, we offer, uh, uh, you know, uh, it starts with four major credits, uh, 
two of which are in construction, depending on which uh, pathway you take. I believe the I believe the university pathway um, doesn't have a construction for both grade 11 and 12, but the rest do. Um, and then other uh, so out of those four major credits, two of them can be construction and then two from this other the other group. Transportation can be part of that because of the transferable skills, tech design, um, computer engineering, physics, art and world issues. Um, minor credits, uh, as mentioned before, are usually a science and or business uh, credit. And then depending on your pathway, the math and English is either two math and an English or two English and a math. Um, and uh, a co-op as well. And our our focus at, at currently with the co-op is that we're trying to build a, um, a community of co-op placements so that we can try to accommodate students that are interested in a specific trade or a specific path that we get them with someone that's actually in the field they want to work in because construction can be huge. Uh, here's some pictures from our class and uh, contrary to uh, to what these pictures are showing. We do enforce uh, uh, eyewear and eye protection in our course. Um, I don't know if these guys took it off before, but you can see there's uh, the top. The top one is uh, some joinery projects, um, uh, a Muskoka chair by the girl in the upper right hand corner, uh, a guitar actually from uh, in the bottom left, a custom guitar this, this guy made. And then uh, in the bottom right hand corner was uh, a major unit we, we um, uh, petitioned for and got uh, admin to help us out with last semester and it's uh, a residential electrical unit where they actually built uh, real electrical um, connections that you would find in a house and from start to finish uh, different applications you would see around a residential home. Um, again, uh, woodworking. So bottom left corner, uh, a couple people working on a, uh, a project that's hand tools and, and joinery. Um, some handsome guy up in the upper left corner there, they snuck in and took a picture of. That's uh, woodworking equipment, uh, jointer, um, going through uh, processes of safe use in, in the shop. Uh, a couple projects, one in the middle and one in the bottom corner of the, the birdhouse, which would have been a grade eight project. Uh, and, um, and learning safe skills. Uh, on the on the equipment as well up in the upper right hand corner there and you can see the shop uh, we we pride ourselves on keeping the shop in in really good shape and really clean uh, you know with a focus on safety so some of the certifications um, our, our plan is that our, our program will evolve and uh, that students will have a say uh, in some of the certifications that we're looking to do year after year. We would like to make it so that, uh, um, you know, students are are never taking the same things. Uh, so uh, working at Heights would be one that would be one of the mandatory along with the uh, first aid CPR and WMIS. And it's a really, it's a really uh, excellent um, uh, certification. Uh, if the, the kids usually love doing it. Basic electrical safety would be a, an optional one. Specialized skills training uh, that would be for tool and machine use and uh, powder actuated tools are are tools that actually work off uh, a, like similar to black powder, so almost like a gunshot. Um, they're used for doing steel uh, erecting and um, and and concrete and steel applications. Confined space awareness um, that one might not be for for everybody, but it would be an option for people. Uh, anyone that would be uh, claustrophobic might have an issue with that one, but obviously we'd have to discuss with uh, with applicants if that's something they want to do. Um, it is one that's that's important in certain uh, construction based industries, so um, it would be a good chance for people to see if it's something they can do if they have a, 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 you know a, an interest in certain jobs like working in a manhole and things like that. Um, you would have to be able to be OK with confined space, so. Uh, in addition to the co-op education, um, which as I said earlier, we'll try and have people move in with, or not move in with, but uh, work with people that are uh, in the industry of their choice. Um, some of the other experience they'll they'll gather would be the, the reach ahead opportunities that Mr. Yantho spoke about earlier. Uh, industry and workplace tours, um, being in the industry for so long, I have a lot of uh, a lot of net, you know, networking 
ability in that area so I can I can arrange tours and, and have people come in and speak with the class as well. Skills Ontario is a big one, um, whether it's the Halton or uh, even in the school board itself. Um, but the Skills Ontario where they actually go and there there's a couple options for construction. Uh, there's electrical, there's carpentry, there's two man carpentry where they build like a gondola a couple of years ago. They're awesome uh, experiences. Um, I've also done cardboard boat uh, engineering competition with uh, with students in the past. So all these things are great and they fall under the field trips as well. Um, field trips are, are uh, you know, we're going to try and get as many as many of those things in to to make the, the experience uh, more interesting for the kids involved. Good evening, everybody. Um, my name is Stephanie Merrick. I am a physical education teacher and a science teacher at St. Thomas Aquinas. Um, I'm here to present to you the future sports schism at STA, and we are really excited for it. Um, can't tell you how much Natasha and I talk about it. Um, <laughs> to start off, we I would like to mention that with the ministry approval, STA would be the only Oakville public and Catholic school to offer this schism. So that is an awesome opportunity for the community of Oakville. Um, and the first slide, we're going to look at all of the amazing facilities we do have at our school. We have our um, two double gyms uh, with, and then outside we have our artific artificial turf field and we have six lane track there. We have a new practice field um, with natural grass uh, and indoor if you can see we have our three lane track so when the weather isn't good our sports teams our um, phys ed classes um, can use the indoor track uh, which is amazing and then we have a freshly updated weight room with a new rig and new equipment which we are super proud of so why is sports schism canada's sports industry is continuously growing. We have dozens of cities in Canada and now in Ontario there are over 25 professional sports teams ranging from hockey to lacrosse to soccer. We have amazing facilities here especially having the Pan Am Games recently. Um, we have great facilities for athletics all around the GTA and according to Stats Canada the Canadian sports sector is generating around eight billion dollars a year and it is growing. So a few careers, I'm not going to go through all of these careers. Uh, this isn't even all of the careers. Uh, I just this is from the ministry website. Um, some of them I want to talk about. They could your child could be in, interested in special events coordinating or broadcasting sports, broadcasting sports photography, um, which we offer the yearbook course here um, at STA, which um, is a tech course which we have as one of our major and minor courses for our program. Um, athletic therapy, physical education teacher, kinesiologist, nutritionist, um, sports psychologist, um, outdoor sports and recreation guide. We have a lot of opportunities for in many different sectors um, in the sports area. So that's why this is such a great opportunity for the students. Some of the trainings and certifications that we will be offering um, coaching, personal training, fitness, uh, group dynamic leadership activities, uh, taping, wrapping for sports. Um, one of the great reasons to go to STA is our amazing outdoor education program. Um, Mr. Alderson teaches many sections of that each year and uh, there is a, it culminates in a trip to Algonquin and at that Algonquin trip they actually get their ORCA level one, which is a canoe tripping um, certification, and that would be one of the uh, training technique certifications that we would offer. Uh, experiential learning and reach ahead experiences. We have many partnerships with universities and colleges around us, Sheridan College. Um, we have uh, many trainers that come to our school for uh, our sports and we could do co-ops with them. We have Humber College that has a great anatomy lab. We have McMaster kinesiolo um, kinesiology. We have Waterloo, Guelph. We have all of these amazing universities that we have connections with that we can um, collaborate with for the students and they can gain um, some 
understanding of certain post-secondary experiences, job twinning, shadowing, coaching experience, athletic facility tours, all of that would um, run into the experiential learning. And then we also would use the students to help run charity events and intramurals in the school. Um, so more leadership opportunities there for them. So for our major courses, you can choose any grade 11 or 12 phys ed course that includes traditional outdoor ed, rec and leisure, fitness, weight training, kinesiology, or leadership. Um, grade 11 biology or chemistry, we've added to that. And there are a few other courses that once you sit down with your guidance counselor, they will give you the list um, for the major sex, uh, sector credits. Minor, you need one credit in a business, science, or humanities that wasn't already listed in your major. Um, we are trying to get a sports marketing course running at the school, so that might be a good option in the future. Um, economics, if you are interested in the business side of that. Math and English, you do need that one math and one English credit, and then the co-op credits. Frequently asked questions we get from students all the time. Um, do I need to be on the honor roll to apply? Definitely not, but you do need to be a student who is responsible and who has good communication skills because you will be communicating with co-op teachers, co-op placements, um, me as a SHISM lead or Ms. Kuzmar, um, and just building connections in the community. You need those communication skills um, to be strong. Are there any costs? There are no costs to the program. Everything is uh, covered through the ministry, which is amazing. All certifications, um, all field trips, everything is covered. Uh, do I have to play in a sports team to be in the sports schism? Definitely not. There are lots of different areas and interests in the sports area, like I've talked about before. There could be photography interest, in, uh, interest or a marketing interest or outdoor ed interests. So you definitely don't have to be on a, a sports team to be involved in our schism. Evening guys. Guys, my name is uh, Tony McConville. I'm the department head of guidance here at St. Thomas Aquinas. Uh, first of all, I just wanted to echo the statements from the uh, the schism leads. This is a great opportunity for you as a student, or if you're a parent or guardian watching tonight for your sons and daughters. Uh, this is a great way for you to really uh, focus your course selection as you're making your way through STA here. Um, I'm going to assume that most of the students watching this presentation tonight are probably grade nine or grade 10 students. And you know that in grade nine and grade 10, out of the eight classes that you choose, most of them are going to be compulsory courses. About six of them, sometimes seven of them can be compulsory courses. But when you get up to grade 11 and grade 12, you're going to find out that uh, most of the courses you're going to choose are electives. And um, that's actually put in place for a reason so that you can select courses based on your pathway. Because here at STA, we honor all pathways. And in particular, when it comes to schism, you might be thinking, you know, how am I going to fit nine courses out of this bundle into my schedule? But it's really straightforward. And this is one of the reasons you have a guidance counselor so that we can sit down with you and make sure that um, you meet all the requirements in your grade 11 and grade 10 year. So that's why on this first page here, it says students normally apply in their grade 10 year. Now, if you're a grade 11 student watching this, you can also still apply. Um, students because the great thing with schism is most of the courses that you would take in your schism uh, might be courses that uh, you would be taking anyway. So it wouldn't be surprising to have a grade 11 student ask to jump into a schism and they have maybe already completed half of the schism credits. Um, and then finally, the great thing about the schism is at the end of your time here at St. Thomas Aquinas, when you graduate, you're going to graduate with a schism diploma. At graduation, it'll be announced that you're a SHISM recipient. And, um, you know, it's a great way to show that you've done something extra and uh, you, you really tailored your courses while you're here at St. Thomas Aquinas. And then last part, so in terms of how to apply, well, step number one, you guys are already doing step number one. You're finding out about the program. Um, so that's step number one, find out about the program, talk to your teachers. Uh, once you hear about the program, the next person you really should come and talk to is definitely the lead teachers, but definitely come and talk to your guidance counselor. Um, 
because like the leads mentioned, there are nine courses in their bundle that uh, do have to get into your schedule. Really easy to put them into your schedule, but we really want to make sure things are planned out um, because we also want to make sure that as a counselor, we want to make sure, number one, that you're set for graduation. Number two, you're picking your courses for your pathway for the program or destination after high school. And then the third thing, we want to make sure that all of that goes together and you're able to also complete your schism. So anyway, so after you meet with your guidance counselor, uh, we're going to give you a link to a, a Google form to an application. Uh, you're going to fill that in and um, on that application, you'll have an opportunity to um, mention what schism you're interested in. You're going to answer some general questions. You're going to give some contact information. Once you submit it, you're then going to receive a, a, a communication back that you can see on the screen here. You're going to confirm your application. And then most importantly, we uh, we do need a signature or an email confirmation from a parent or guardian. And this part is important because once you do get approved into the schism, typically in September, uh, one of the guidance counselors is going to go in and change your diploma to a schism diploma. So we do need a parent or, or a guardian permission to do that. And um, yeah, and then I think that's it. Oh, then the last thing is here is uh, this application that you can see on the screen here. You will have to give this to Miss Power, who is we do have four counselors, but she is going to be the the lead teacher for our schism. Um, so you're definitely going to want to hand this into her. OK, all right. Thank you, Ms. Mr. McConville. Uh, I was just watching the, the chat. One of the questions was about how co-op courses uh, may impact uh, while well, I have you what uh, are based uh, in terms of applying to college or university. Um, just to clarify that they're not part of what you would use for a application. I just want to clarify that. No, yeah, so 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 you know, when you're applying and, and when we send all your grades to the colleges and universities, uh, co-op courses don't get used in the calculation. Um, that doesn't mean schism's not uh, vital. Uh, I, I think we know as counselors that a lot of programs, post-secondary programs are coming becoming highly competitive. And so there are programs that aren't just based solely on grades. There are programs where their supplement applications have to be given out. So essays, interviews, portfolios. So saying that you did a co-op and you did something extra uh, is something that uh, can sometimes help you uh, maybe get into a program. OK. Thank you, sir. Hello again. Uh, I think we are going to have Mr. Montoya, our vice principal, join us for a message. Mr. Montoya, are you there? While we're waiting, I can, uh, I think, can you see me or no? We don't see you, um, but I can hear you. You can hear me, but you can't see me. That's probably better for everyone. Okay. Um, <laughs> okay, Mr. Montoya. Oh, there you are. Take it I'm away. I'm here. Yes. All right, thank you, Ms. Kuzmar. Um, good evening, Raiders. And it is with great enthusiasm that I welcome you to the STA Schism program. On behalf of uh, the St. Thomas Aquinas administration, it is with great pride that we showcase our Schism program designed to bring out, showcase, and foster your God given talents. This is something that all of the adults at STA take very seriously. Our teachers have not only paved the way through programming that is second to none, but, content, but continue to develop cutting edge programming to have you simply put succeed. In conclusion, we are proud of our teachers who continue to inspire young minds through programs such as the schisms we are celebrating today. Mr. Peruzin and the administration who foster the teacher's direction and provide them with the necessary resources to develop these programs, and Mr. Cordero, our superintendent, who directs us, the administration. We are a team. We're a family. We are your team. We are your family. Friends, welcome to Raider Nation Schism. Brothers and sisters, welcome to St. Thomas Aquinas. Schism. Thank you, Ms. Kuzmar. Thank you, Raiders. 
Thank you, Ms. Montoya, Mr. Montoya. Uh, we have Ms. Paula, Ms. Pollock to come back to us. Uh, she was having some technical issues, but I think she has a few, few more things to say as we uh, near the end of this presentation. Ms. Pollock, are you there? I'm here. Thanks. Uh, if there's a delay, I, I do apologize in the country and sometimes my internet doesn't work in the evenings. Um, so I just want to say that as um, as an operating room nurse, I do bring that right into the classroom. So we look at all the different fields from the hospital. Um, is the internet that bad? Nope, you're sounding good. You're sounding good. Oh. Keep going. Thanks. It just keeps coming up poor uh, quality, so I do apologize. OK, so I do want to let you know that um, for trips and stuff like that, um, I did last year. I was able to bring them right into the operating room as one of our field trips to give an introductory into the hospital. So you can actually see behind me, it's one of the operating rooms um, from the Jervinsky Hospital. OK, and um, so if anyone has any questions about that, since uh, thank you, um, somebody else had to finish off my slides before. So I just want to say I'm sorry about that. But um, if you have any questions, I am here to answer any of them. Uh, we, I do go over a, a bunch of different certifications. Um, I do have a lot of uh, other professions that do come in. We do the concussion awareness. McMaster uh, runs that and it is by the Brain Institute. Um, we do go into um, a couple of the other hospitals. We do do Stop the Bleed, which was already mentioned, okay, um, as well as we get a tour inside the trauma area because I'm friends with a lot of the surgeons and stuff, so we're able to give a little bit kind of behind the scenes. So then we do focus on IVs and stuff like that. So I just want to say that it is a great opportunity to be able to do all this medical field introduction and you have a lot of fun doing it while learning what careers you could be going into and that's all so thank you very much uh thank, thank you miss Polak. uh sorry i just wanted to i'll just um i wanted to address some of the questions that uh i'm having a hard time managing screens and also typing but i wanted to address some of the questions that came up so there was a, a couple questions in the chat about uh post-secondary as mr mcconville said you know, some of the benefits of, a, of an SHSM program might be in terms of applying to college and university might be um, in terms of those uh, additional components. So portfolios and essays where you could speak about things that you accomplished in the SHSM program. So we certainly don't say, you know, this is a we're not advertising as a big um, in terms of a measurable way to give you a leg up in terms of applying to college or university that's still going to be depending on the program you're applying to as well as you know what you make of your shsm experience to some extent um you know so if it's if it's programs that don't require supplementals um they typically don't use an shsm program for anything application wise and, and there's a good reason for that, and that's because obviously not every school offers an SHSM program or offers a healthcare SHSM as an example. Uh, there are, we typically don't mention it as a major thing because it's so varied. Um, some colleges and a few um, specific schools within a university do offer some automatic or scholarships that you can apply for uh, depending on the SHSM and the program. But again, they're very, they're, they're limited. I mean, they're growing, but they're, um, there's certainly not what we would say as a, a selling feature for it, um, but if it's an opportunity for students to get that extra financial support, then that's all the all the better for them. In terms of application due dates, uh, typically, you know, our students are applying or sorry, are completing their course requests now, so they're due at the beginning of March. So obviously, that's the best interest to think about applying for the SHSM before then, because that way they will be able to sit down with their guidance counselor map out the courses and decide to apply. Um, obviously, the earlier any student, regardless of SHSM or not, um, you know, it, it, the earlier they apply, the more likely they are to get into their electives they choose. So obviously there's sometimes conflicts in terms of when electives are. We have had students apply in September to join an SHSM program uh, and it was fine. We've also had students that apply in September of their grade 11 year and it's been a challenge to try to 
work their course requests because of how late they are applying for the program. So we certainly encourage those conversations with your guidance counselor and those questions with our SHSM lead teachers to happen earlier, um, certainly than later, and try to make sure you're still applying, or sorry, completing your option sheets uh, and doing that through my blueprint um, as early as you can. For the existing programs, um, so the ones that are currently running, ICT and healthcare, you can indicate interest in my blueprint and that'll help us you know, contact you to see if you have questions. Uh, because um, the sports uh, SHSM and the construction and carpentry SHSM are not officially approved, they do not appear in my blueprint, but that means that you can still meet with your guidance counselor and express interest and they can, uh, again, make sure that you've mapped out those requirements uh, as well um, in terms of planning those courses over your grade 11 and 12 years. Thank you, Mr. Yantho. Uh, I think we have a, uh, I think Mr. McConville would like to pop in one more time, or did Mr. Yantho cover what you wanted to say, Mr. McConville? Uh, yeah, he, he did. The only thing I just wanted to mention was we've had some students come into the office um, asking about, so so the option sheet deadline is March 1st, and they were asking, should they, should they be picking their classes now, or should they be waiting until they get accepted into a Schism program? So, Definitely make sure your classes are submitted by March 1st. Uh, like Mr. Yantho said, you can apply to a Schism program anytime up until September. Um, you definitely want to make sure you're getting the classes that you want to get into. Um, and like I said in the previous slide, it, if, if you're interested, interested in a certain field, you're probably going to be selecting a lot of those classes. So make sure you're selecting your classes. Make sure you're making an appointment with your counselor and uh, so that we can get uh, your your application in and your courses by March 1st. Thanks. Thank you, Mr. McConville. Um, to that point, I will say uh, that you know this these Schism programs are a great opportunity for all of our students. Uh, the big picture is this: um, you are gaining sector specific knowledge um, in a specific area you're being taught by wonderful teachers that not only i mean if we're going to talk about pathways um, and i know when you're in high school whether you're watching as a student or whether you're watching as a parent you know you don't have to know exactly what your path is um, but opening up your options and putting yourself in a position where you can most definitely gain skills in a certain area, but you know the bigger picture is you're going to be involved in certifications and field trips and you're going to have special guest speakers. You're going to be taught by wonderful teachers that have you know special skills in their own area. You're going to be gaining skills in leadership, communication, teamwork, collaboration. So although the Schism program may not you know, add a few extra <laughs> points to your grade point average or get you into university, it will most definitely provide you with some additional skills and experiences that other students um, in other schools or other programs may not be exposed to. So, you know, we highly encourage you to explore this opportunity. Um, and in terms of the, you know, the application is a little bit of a formality. The most important thing that you do is plan your courses. Talk to the Schism leads in those areas and make an appointment with guidance and, and make sure that you are able to fit in um, some of those sector specific courses that you need to graduate with Schism and that bundle of nine co-op and some of the certifications that go with that. You know, if I if I may end on a bit of a personal note, um, I, I have to say I've I've seen uh, this Schism program, sorry, I have seen Schism programs uh, work very well. Um, I've seen them very successful in other schools and in, in our school here. And it's definitely an area that I wish when I was a student and I went to St. Thomas Aquinas, I wish the opportunity was there for me because, you know, I did get into the sports sector, both as a coach, um, as a leader in, in uh, community in the town of Oakville and as a teacher. And I paid a lot of money for a lot of my certifications and a lot of the training. And the beauty about the Schism program is that we are provided with ministry funding and that funding we use to provide free certifications and training, free field trips, um, free reach out experiences. So it's, you know, it's definitely an area that um, um, 
again, that we would, you know, encourage. I'm just looking at my post-it notes because as everyone was talking, I had all these bubbles pop up. Um, again, you know, I can't say enough good things about St. Thomas Aquinas. I can't say enough good things about the team that's here. Let's not forget the teachers, um, all teachers in our building and in other schools, they went to university for four years. They went to teachers college for one to two years. Almost all of us have additional qualification courses and additional certifications in other areas. Um, so this is a community of lifelong learners. We're all students, we're learning together, uh, and we want to continue that path with uh, with the students at St. Thomas Aquinas. So, you know, again, thank you for joining. We are trying to respond to as many of the questions that we can in the, um, in the chat, so keep them coming. Uh, we appreciate your time and attention. Mr. Yantho, did you want to say something? Yeah, so one, I'm just kind of um, jumping in while you maybe <laughs> catch up on some other questions that uh, that are coming up. One of them that I came up a couple of times was about IB students or pre-IB students uh, applying to a specialist high skills major. Um, in, in the past, the answer has been no, because it was really hard to work the requirements. Um, but for all of our programs, we're looking at ways to potentially uh, have uh, students that are in IB um, that are looking to also be part of the SHISM program of ways of doing that. So it involves some flexibility uh, and it's really a case by case scenario because of the demands that being in both programs would be. Obviously the IB program is very substantial um, and a rigorous program and so we're always making sure that you know we put students in a good spot to think that if they're going to do both um, that they're going to be successful and we're not you know putting too much. Um, one of the benefits of that SHSM program is um, because of it's kind of designed to be in that middle area where you know we provide and the program provides a lot of opportunities without being like overwhelming with as if you're taking a you know a fifth class during the day. Um, so it is kind of in that middle ground, but certainly for those IB students or pre-IB students, there might be some requirements where they would have to take more courses in the summer potentially to earn those electives. But that's a conversation that right away goes to. Uh, your guidance counselor for those students that are interested in doing both to see if it's possible and if it's worthwhile and if it's beneficial for that student's uh, you know pathway and their plan. Yeah, actually, Mr. Yantho, I'm I'm so glad you brought that up because um, you know there the questions that we get from the sports schism, uh, we get a lot of questions from athletes that have very um, you know very demanding programs that they're participating in on the side. So you know whether they're involved in a, a rep program or they're highly involved in sports, their nights are occupied. They want to make time for um, their studies, and so their worry is how can I fit it all in? And you did touch on a few ways that you can fit it in. Of course, guidance will help you with that, but most definitely you can take co-op at night school or summer school. Um, there are a few courses that you can take if you need a grade 11 course and you want to take it in grade 10 um, to free up some room in grade 11 or grade 12. I mean, there's where there's a will, there's a way, and we, we're trying to provide pathways for as many students as possible. Um, it's not a perfect system, but we, we definitely are trying. So please, uh, please reach out and um, and ask us if you if you aren't sure if you can fit Shism in. And, and just one clarification, um, because there was a couple of questions about co-op. Um, yeah, co-op, you know, it is the responsibility of your co-op teacher to help you obtain a co-op. Obviously, that's a challenge with depending on exactly what you have plans for your post-secondary, where you're very specific about what you want a co-op to be in. Um, we always encourage students for their own personal growth to like do that networking and talk to you know parent their friends parents and things like that um but the the, the teacher the co-op teacher whether it's at summer school or day school or night school works with students whether that's their schism student or just a, a you know a, a, a non-shm student in co-op works with them to find a placement and um so it's not the responsibility of a student to come in with the co-op uh, it has been my experience working with you know we've only been doing um uh, you know, the ICT for this is our third year. So it, it's been limited, but certainly we have had students because of being in a SHSM program have been able to get co-op placements that maybe with places that haven't had a, a co-op student before um, because, you know, or they're more willing to take an SHSM student because they know they have a little bit more experience in their coursework um, before coming into the, the workplace. Um, currently likely for students um, 
some of our students they're taking um, are planning to take co-op this summer as well as students that took co-op last summer last summer's co-ops the ones that uh, took a summer co-op did it online um, and obviously that situation um, with restrictions around the pandemic uh, certainly is kind of an ever-changing things of how that co-op might look but it is uh, something that again when you sign up for co-op the, the co-op teacher does work with you around that thank you sir and um, if anyone is looking for additional information on any of our four schism programs it's all on our school website uh, if you select students and then specialist high skills major so the top ba banner students scroll down to specialist high skills major uh, there is a link there um, with some information and then there's additional links um, that can lead you into some other areas um, another great way to stay connected with everything going on in the school is just following simply our school uh, twitter account uh, and then of course each department has their own twitter account but that's a great way to stay connected and get reminded of nights like tonight uh, and we'll have more nights coming so um, again you know please feel free to email any one of us um, we are living in these virtual times, so <laughs> we're an email away, which is a good thing. And uh, if your if your son or daughter or anyone has a question, you know, please send them to us, um, and we can have a quick chat. Um, you know, we we want to make sure that we're getting the right information out to the right people, and um, I don't want anyone to be, you know, to shy away or be afraid to ask a question. Any question is a good question. So. Again, I um, would like to thank you for joining. Um, I did just get a, me a message from our principal, Mr. Perusin. Uh, he wanted to join, he sends his best, and he is thanking all of the presenters and all the hard work that went into this. On a personal note, I wanna thank Mr. Yantho. Um, <laughs> it's a good thing he's our ICT uh, or our technology department head because uh, he really helped us get through um, putting this live and uh, these Google slides and making making this look, you know, um, presentable for all of us to use. So thank you, Mr. Yantho, and thank you to all the other Schism leads and our administration. And of course, um, it was nice to see one of our superintendents, Mr. Cordero, join us. So if there isn't anything else from anyone else, any of our presenters, um, I think we can say good night, goodbye, and email us. <laughs> Thanks everyone.